Good morning ladies and gents, welcome to this video from South London Investigator Paranormal, Mark here. Um, we've just had uh, a few people inquiring about the kit that we use when we're out investigating and I thought it might be a good idea just to give people a little introduction to what we use and what it does. Um, I won't go into too much detail but it's just like a, a brief overview of the kit we use. So without further ado, I'll get started. Uh, first bit of kit, very self-explanatory, pad and a pen. Um, it may sound silly, but we record a lot of information throughout an investigation. But more importantly, we record a lot of information before an investigation and um, we take baseline readings, temperature, EMF, things like that, and we look for certain things. So for instance, if we're in a room and there's a particular draft coming from a window that's closed, we record that because we don't want that to manipulate our investigation during the night and we can easily just debunk it and not waste time with it. Um, so that's why we do that and that's why we carry a notepad and pen. Second bit of kit we carry, um, and this may sound self-explanatory, we've got tons of these, but the torch goes without saying really, a lot of what we do, we do in the dark or in dimly lit places. Um, I personally have stacked it in the dark. So we don't wanna be smashing our heads off of low ceilings, tripping over uneven floors. Um, so we have a torch and we ask everybody on our investigations to make sure they've got a torch. Um, moving on to some of the more um, gadgets that we use. Um, let's go with these first. These are digital voice recorders. They come in all shapes and sizes, all different prices. There we go, digital voice recorders. These are fantastic. These are worth their weight in gold. Every um, organisation that I've ever investigated with will have tons of these. And the reason why is because we do record stuff um, on these, noises on these, that we can't hear with our own ears. Um, and it's good later on in after an investigation when we are reviewing our evidence to go through these. Every investigation I've been on, I think, bar one, we've recorded stuff on a digital recorder and it has been absolutely fantastic. Particularly a private event we did in central London um, earlier this year. The, the voices, the noises, the sounds that we were recording were unbelievable. So they are great bits of kit. Um, traditional stuff. These are dowsing rods, divining rods, whatever you want to call them. Carly raves these. These are Carly will always, always, always say these are a good bit of kit. Again, every group I've ever worked with has, has had these of some kind. You can get long ones, short ones, uh, but we prefer the short ones. I've had these in their kit. And basically, you hold them like so you ask for spirit to show you your yes and your no and the idea is they will they will turn in different ways of their own free volition okay been around for hundreds of years um basically the victorians use these in their sciences but the idea is, is that you use them to communicate by asking questions that have a yes or no answer carly raves on these so yeah good bits of kit and we recently used those when we did the dark lines of london tour Steve Saller, our friend um, from Dark Lines, he used those and was gobsmacked by what happened. So, um, so yeah, good bits of kit. Whilst we're on the subject of traditional bits of kit, this little bag here contains Carly's, it's like Carly's baby almost. This is Carly's very own pendulum. We do have different ones, but this is this is Carly's personal one. There we go. And the idea is very similar to the, the dowsing rods, is that you hold it in a particular way and you ask it to move to show you a yes or no answer. And then you ask questions going forward with yes or no responses. Uh, we investigated Pollock's Toy Museum earlier this year. Carly used the pendulum, got some great results, some great answers, which were then validated later on in the evening using other methods. So they are, fant that is a fantastic piece of kit and I won't ever dispute that that kit, bit of kit don't work to be quite honest. Um, moving on then, we have um, these, these are uh, digital thermometers, we've got a couple of these in our kit. These are without a shadow of a doubt one of the best tools that an investigator will have because we do get temperature fluctuations, some of them are natural, some of them can't be explained but these are so accurate from in my, you know, my opinion that they, you can't dispute what's coming from these. And the idea is, is that you aim it in a particular way, you pull this trigger here, the red light shines, and then the temperature is on the back. 
and it's 29 degrees apparently emanating from my tablet um like i say we've got loads of these so um good bits of kit um what else have we got we've got this this is this is not a bad bit of kit it's not my favorite bit of kit um but this is the sb7 spirit box basically this rapidly sweeps through the fm uh frequency wave band forwards or backwards the idea being is that what you get from the device shouldn't be intelligible you, you shouldn't be able to make out the words any words you do make out are the theory is is being manipulated by the the electromagnetic energy from the spirit um, uh, and they communicate through this <clears throat> I've never had any success using this believe it or not but I have seen people who have um, so I'm not disputing it um, I'm just saying that I personally have, I have used it but never had anything from it um, then we move on to these now these are electromagnetic meters this is the original k2 meter this is a slightly different one if i go with this one first the original basically you turn it on just push that bit there it lights up it's measured in milligauss up to over 20 plus what it does is you ask spirit to to come towards a device and the electromagnetic energy from spirit is meant to manipulate these lights i have personally seen it go up to red um, but these are easily, easily manipulated. I only have to go and turn this on and put it next to my microwave, next to my TV, next to my tumble dryer, and it will shoot up in lights right up to the red. So you've got to be careful when you're using this, and you've got to debunk. You have to debunk when you're using this that there's no electrical sources anywhere nearby, which is why I've got this one. Um, this is my personal bit of kit. Um, but I, I keep it in the team's in the team's kit. This is a digital electromagnetic field tester. I think these are used predominantly by electricians on building sites. Um, but as you can see, it measures in milligauss, and you can also change it over to measure in another uh, another form. Um, it's got a temperature at the bottom there as well, and you can do that in Fahrenheit as well as centigrade. Um, I just think this is without a doubt the best electromagnetic reader there is on the market I think you can pick this up for about 14 quid um, in all different shapes and sizes but they are fantastic we use this again uh, like the thousand ones we I used this on the dark lines tour uh, around the church at Blackheath and was getting the readings were rocketing up and going sky high and there was no reason we tried to debunk there was no reason for those readings to go up so high perfect bit of kit this next bit of kit is not bad um, this is a REM proximity detector it's got a loud beep when I turn it on oh, there we go so it is loud you may have seen a REM pod uh, round device lights on top big aerial coming off the idea being is that it emits a um, electromagnetic field around the device and then anything that enters that field triggers so if I turn that on now you can see the aerial there and it's not going off and if I there we go that's how it works basically um, I've had success with this device it's it's a good device it's ch we got this from our friends over at infrared um, it's much cheaper than an actual REM pod it's smaller so it doesn't take up so much space in your in your kit box um, but it is a good bit of kit and in some shape or form every group will have a REM device uh, we have this device um, this device was um, built by our, our friends uh, Sean and Bex over at Ghost Dimension but they even signed it for us isn't that nice um, it's a static detector um, it will uh, detect fluctuations in static energy and the lights will shine doesn't alarm um, but the lights will go off thank you very much uh, Bex and Sean for that because um, it's a good bit of kit I love using it um, moving on then that's uh, the bulk of, of our technical kit there are a few other little bits I'll show you in a second um, but I wanted to show you some of the the um, the, the, the less more the, the less high-tech kit because that is all well and good but there are things that you can use that don't cost an arm and a leg. Um, 
as so we have things like Ted. This is a bog standard ordinary teddy bear. It doesn't look, I'm squeezing it, it doesn't alarm, it doesn't flash. This is just an ordinary teddy bear. In fact, this is Carly's teddy bear that she's had since she was a, a nipper. Um, we use this as a trigger object. You will go into locations where um, spirit will interact with certain objects. For instance, we are going to the Ragged School later this year. The Ragged School is a Victorian poor child's school. They would have played with teddy bears. So we will set Ted up somewhere in the building. And the idea is, is we're looking for Ted to be moved. We're looking for Ted to, his arms to be up, his legs to be down, for him to fall in, for his head to have been turned all the way around. As you can see, it does move. Um, and that's what we're looking for from Ted. It's a trigger object. All we're looking, all we're doing is putting something into the location that the 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 people that were there or are there now in spirit would have and could have interacted with when they were alive. So on the same su same subject, we've got this now. Car boot cells are fantastic for paranormal kit. I can assure you. We pick this box up, and I'll show you in a minute. I'll take the band off. There we go. Lovely little box for a couple of quid. A car boot cell, and it is in absolute perfect nick. The reason we want that, wanted that little box is because we bought from the stall next door to where this box was for sale, tons and tons, we've got tons of them, look, of old coins. We've got shillings, we've got old pennies. There were so many old things in here, old coins in here. Um, and again, we use these because they are trigger objects. They are objects that people in a venue or location may have interacted with when they were alive. So for instance, we've got pennies in here. This one's from 1921. I don't know if you can see that on the on there. But we've got some really old ones. I mean, this one's so faded. 1862. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that on there. Old pennies, old half shillings, old half pennies. But we put these into a location to try and elicit a reaction, to try and ramp up the atmosphere, to try and give spirit something it would have recognized in life. And that's the reason why we do that. Um, this bit of kit here, it's a new bit of kit, Carly's decorated it as you can see. Um, it's, a, it's an automatic writing planchette, just made out of plywood, a couple of ball bearing balls on the bottom. Basic, basically, pen in the top, lock the pen in place, use it like a planchette to write. We use this at, um, well not this one, but we used this uh, method at Pollock's Toy Museum amazing results absolutely amazing results got answers to questions using this great bit of kit we have this bit of kit <sighs> looks like a gadget out of ghostbusters i know that is a parabolic speaker basically what it does is it amplifies all the noise in the immediate vicinity um, and allows the listener to hear noises that you wouldn't naturally be able to make out with your own ear got to be mega careful with that bit of kit because it does pick up absolutely every noise if you shuffle it will pick it up and it will be ultra loud and deafen you likewise someone moving down the far end of a darkened room that you don't necessarily see with your own eyes it will be picked up on that speaker so you do have to be careful um this bit of kit here now this this might aggravate a few people but i'm going to show it anyway i won't get it out of the box there we go it's upside down that is our prayer for the fallen Ouija board inside there. Um, everyone's got their own theory on Ouija boards. I'm not going to bore people senseless talking for hours and hours about Ouija boards. A Ouija board is a tool for communication in my eyes. Used properly in the right pair of hands, it is totally safe. However, there are advocates out there that will say that when you use a Ouija board, you're opening up a portal to hell. You're opening up a gateway to something that you don't understand and I appreciate that that is other people's thoughts and opinions. However, we open a Ouija board session correctly, we use it with respect, we close the session correctly, we cleanse the board correctly. As far as I'm concerned, there is no danger to using a Ouija board or spirit board. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, and like I said, we're not gonna go into that in this video. Um, we could be talking for hours about Ouija boards, but all I'm gonna say is, We've used them, everyone in the team uses them. No one's ever come to any harm using them. No one's ever had an attachment 
no one's ever seen anything or heard anything demonic since using the Ouija board. We've had some great results using them, both historical and personal. Carly had some amazing results using a Ouija board that got personal messages brought through to her, which I'm, I won't go into in this video. Um, I'm an advocate, personally, of a Ouija board. I think they are great bits of kit. They are easy, easily, again, easily manipulated. I have personally been on other teams' events where I've seen people pushing the planchette. I don't agree with that. Um, so you, you just have to make up your own mind when using them. We've got loads of other bits of kits. We've got we've got light sensors. We've got other trigger objects. The last bit of kit I'm going to show before we end the video. Car boot sales again. Look at this. This old box. Look at that. This old box we picked up for five, I think, a, a car boot sale recently, and we wanted it to house this young lady. Now, this young lady is the newest bit of kit. That we haven't yet used. But I've got to be very careful because she is very delicate. And here we have Lorraine. Carly named her Lorraine. Um, Lorraine is our it's a trigger object. It's a little doll. Lorraine's face, she's got three faces. You turn her head and she's asleep, she's sad and she's happy. We've got her unhappy face here. Lorraine also has a built-in REM detector. So I'm not going to turn her on now, she hasn't got a battery in. But we will place Lorraine in a location and again, very much like the REM device, anything interacting with the doll will trigger the device, it will alarm, it will flash. She's got a light built in under here, just under her chin, and she will flash. and. Um, and yeah, Lorraine, ladies and gents. So we will be using her, probably at the Ragged School, because that's probably the best place to use her. Um, but there's Lorraine. Um, all in total, believe it or not, Lorraine has cost us, with the box as well, probably about 20 quid, I think. It's amazing what you can get out of there. So that's our kit, ladies and gents, the, the majority of our kit. I'm, like I say, we've got other bits of kit. We've got full spectrum cameras, we've got digital cameras, we've got... Uh, uh, video cameras, we've got light sensors, we've got trip wires, the electric uh, laser light trip wires that we use. But that's the bulk of our kit that we use when we're out and about. Um, and I hope that's answered some of your questions. Again, if anybody would like to talk to us regarding any of the kit we use or any of our investigations, you can contact us at southlondonparanormal at gmail.com. You can go onto our uh, Twitter just search for South London in for one. Um, same for Facebook and Instagram, or you can visit us at www.southlondonparanormal.com. Thank you for tuning in. Bye bye.